Happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to 19 Now, the only place you find East Texas news at 6.30, both online and on your telly. Well, as I said, it's Friday, and that means we're out under the lights. Hey, Tristan Hardy, huge rivalry game tonight, right? Hey, guys, so it's Tyler Lee and Tyler and JT going up against each other tonight. It's a big game. Who's going to take it all for tonight? So the players are warming up on the field. It's going to be a good game. Thanks, Tristan. One celebrity comes clean about his sexual misconduct this afternoon. Others stand accused. So many that an LAPD task force is honing in on Hollywood. What do bees and criminals have in common? Perhaps pollen. Tonight, meet an unlikely detective. They call him the pollen profiler. Coming up a little later, you'll see why. A new water workout lets you flex your imagination while firming up your core. To do it, men and women are sporting tails. If I could go back and talk to my five-year-old self, she would be so proud of me if I told her that I was a mermaid for the day. <laughs> so that's my favorite part is I actually get to be a mermaid. That makes me laugh. We'll show you the new workout trend making a big splash after this. Uh, well, coming up later tonight. Right now, a great night for high school football and a huge high school rivalry. You can throw out the records. John Tyler versus Robert E. Lee. Oh, yeah. Tristan Hardy is at Rose Stadium. Hey, Tristan, big, big game, right? It's a big game. All right, Brian. So we out here with the good people. It's Tyler, JT, Lee. Big game. The players are warming up on the field right now. Now, both of these teams have missed the playoffs. They haven't missed the playoffs since the late 1980s, 1989 to be exact. So there are no games after this. So this one, all or nothing. It's all about the bragging rights after this, guys. So from what I've been told, now this isn't the oldest rivalry in East Texas, but it is the biggest one that people always attend to. Just look at the crowds over here, guys. It's filling up. It's going to get bigger. I was at the tailgate earlier. I mean, you can just feel the energy. It's going to be a very crucial game for both of these teams. I mean, who are you rooting for? That's what I want to know. This rivalry has been going on for more than 45 years. And when I ask people about this game, what makes it so special? I mean, they all tell me it keeps them on the edge of their seats. It's intense. And who doesn't want to just see good quality football? You know what I mean? So the crowd is getting, like I said, the crowd is getting bigger. Check out the teams that are warming up right now. This should be very interesting how this plays out. And make sure you stay tuned for Under the Lights later on tonight. All right, Brian, I'm reporting for 19 Now. I'm Tristan Hardy. All right, thank you, Tristan. As Tristan was saying, this is the first time neither of these teams have made the playoffs in the same year since 1989, and no one out there cares. It's that big of a rivalry. Now let's see what the weather's going to be like out there. Well, Brian, not sure if you noticed, but the crowd out there to include uh, our reporter, we saw that he's wearing a sweater. So, yes, uh, we're definitely de dealing with some cooler temperatures across East Texas tonight for under the lights weather. As far as your forecast for tonight, you don't need uh, the wet weather gear. We're looking pretty good and quiet. And I do apologize. We're going to go ahead and go over to Max 1 real quick, if you don't mind. There we go. There's your forecast for tonight. Cool and clear temperatures right now currently in the mid to upper 50s. We're going to be getting down to about 49 to 50 degrees by the end of the ball game. Maybe a slight little wind chill in the upper 40s, but again, no wet weather gear needed for tonight. It is going to be a dry forecast. Your next seven days, Veterans Day looking pretty good. A mixture of some sun and clouds out here, close to 70 degrees. We'll have a, a slight rain chance on Sunday. Nothing really uh, too impressive as far as rain concerns go for us here at about a 20% chance of a stray shower, so nothing widespread. And then we're looking good for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday back up into the 70s and then a few more showers possible Thursday and Friday. We're look, awaiting a next cold front to be Friday night into Saturday, bringing our temperatures back down into the 60s and some more rain chances. We'll have that forecast online for you. Back to you, Bebo's. <laughs> Thank you, A. Romero. Developing news we're following this afternoon. Comedian Louis C.K. has admitted to sexual misconduct charges that five women accused him of. He is among the latest celebrities being accused of this type of behavior. Now LAPD has a special task force to focus on sexual abuse in Hollywood. Jamie Yukis has a look at how investigations are intensifying. 
The Los Angeles District Attorney Jackie Lacey says her task force is working in coordination with the LAPD and Beverly Hills Police Departments. The task force includes specially trained deputy district attorneys and veteran sex crimes prosecutors to work together to ensure a uniformed approach to the legal review. Nearly 70 women have come forward with allegations against Harvey Weinstein, who is also being investigated by New York City prosecutors. The LA Times says more than 200 women have accused director James Toback of sexual misconduct. And actor Ed Westwick is the subject of two rape allegations from 2014. All three men have denied wrongdoing. Sex crimes cases can be difficult to prove. DA Lacey directs the largest office of its kind in the nation. She said yesterday she has not received any cases from law enforcement agencies for possible criminal filings. Jamie Yukas, CBS News, Los Angeles. Wow. The BBC also announced it is pulling a new Agatha Christie adaptation from its holiday television schedule because allegations against that actor, Ed Westwick. Students at Three Lakes Middle School in Tyler send a special salute to veterans, the Gator family. One of the local veterans and service members in attendance to know what their sacrifice means to the younger generation. By singing the national anthem and a hearty thank you, students showed their appreciation for our men and women in uniform. We always appreciate when the uh, younger generations recognize what the vets do. Speakers today say we can never fully repay our debt of gratitude to the more than 650,000 American service members who have died in battle. We thank them, too. For a list of Veterans Day events, head to CBS19.tv. There are still 44 days until Christmas. I didn't add it up. Libby did. But the Salvation Army started celebrating today with their annual Christmas kickoff. <laughs> The Salvation Army's 2017 Kettle and Angel Tree season. I love it. The goal is to raise $375,000 to help fund the many Salvation Army programs. 2,500 children are registered as angels this year, and they are counting on the generosity of East Texans for their Christmas this year. So go ahead and help an angel out. New details tonight, a Palestine high school beat boy, excuse me, a Palestine high school boy beaten in a locker room fight in September continues his road to recovery. Michael Stanzak was left with a broken jaw and nose after a fight with a student back in September. A police report says the fight began over a bet. Stanzak's mother tells us today that although he's been readmitted twice due to seizures and complications, things are looking up. Michael's younger brother says the family is still healing, but there is a silver lining. This is really just having us bond together instead of spreading us apart because it's showing everyone here in our family that we can support each other. And with this, I'm just really hoping that this will create a bigger bond for all of us. Michael is being treated for PTSD. PTSD, his mom tells us they are taking it one day at a time. Well, coming up, a warning about searching the internet for a new four-legged friend. The key here is to stop for a minute when you see a puppy that you want to purchase online, do your homework, do your research. The puppies look adorable and the ads look real, but they're not. That story coming up after the break. He's not going with me? Okay. Facebook Live. Hey. All right, sorry, I was talking to the boss off camera. 
<laughs> but uh, hey, thanks for being here on a Friday. I'm usually not here, I'm usually at the game of the week, but uh, we had some difficulties with that. So I'm hosting the show today, no Gabby and uh, me, but we tossed that to Tristan. He doesn't know a lot about football, but I thought he did an admirable job on that live shot, talking about uh, the big rivalry game here in Tyler. JT and Tyler Lee, who knew? Who knew it's been nine, since 1989, since one or the other didn't make the playoffs? So let's quickly do our math. What's that, 28 years? 28 years since uh, one or the other didn't make the playoffs, and that'll happen this year. But nobody out there, like I said, nobody out there cares. Yeah, oh, there it is. Nobody cares. It's JT versus Lee. That guy's really exciting. He's doing backflips. He's so excited. But <laughs> that should be a great game tonight. And it's bragging rights. Whenever you have a bragging rights game, I don't care if both teams are 0-9, there's going to be some excitement. So uh, look for the highlights tonight on Under the Lights, JT and Robert E. Lee. All right. Well, those holidays are right around the corner, you probably guessed, right? A time of year when many people think about adding a fur furry friend, furry friend to the family. <laughs> Say that three times fast. The reason? Online pet scams, though, are popping up everywhere. Jennifer Titus shows us what you need to know before making a very costly mistake. He was perfect. Carla Rozier can't say enough about her four-legged friend. It was like love at first sight. But it took more than one sight to find her beloved snow. This looks like a good spot. The one that caught her eye, gorgeousmaltese.com. But look, I mean, they have people that they said they sent, they, that people purchased dogs. And a photo of the dog she had been saving up her money for. They were telling me what I needed to do, what information I needed. And at the very bottom in small writing was a form of payment. But then when Carla went to pay. Then I called and it's a Virginia zip code. But when I called, it sounded like someone from another country. And that's when her eyes were opened even more. GorgeousMaltese.com, she says, was a fake website. One of the thousands online right now, according to this recent Better Business Bureau report. And I work really hard for my money, so just thinking about that I could have lost all of that. I'm a single parent. I would have been devastated. I probably would have cried myself to sleep. Carla reported the website to the BBB, and we looked up gorgeousmaltese.com ourselves and copied one of the photos on their site and did a reverse lookup on Google to find the same photo pop up on a different website, alwaysmaltese.com. When I go to that website that she reported as being a scam, it's still up and running. Why? These websites are popping up left and right, and it's a never-ending battle for law enforcement, for organizations like the Better Business Bureau. The key here is keep on reporting, get that information out there. Uh, when we get information and in numbers and we can gather those facts and show to agencies that this is a true scam, then it's going to help us get that to law enforcement and help shut these down. In just the past few months nationwide, we found reports from all over the country. So we were really heartbroken. I finally realized that this is for sure a scam. Didn't really feel right, but I went ahead and did it. The key here is to stop for a minute when you see a puppy that you want to purchase online, do your homework, do your research. And never wire any money. We're working very thoroughly to help shut these fraudulent websites down, so do your research. Thankfully, that's what Carla says she did when she found snow and can only hope others will open their eyes and Google to research a little before they decide on their beloved four-legged friend. The Better Business Bureau reports that 80% of those pop-up ads for pets for sale online, well, they're fake. Many of them have the exact same image used on different ads, so make sure you're looking closely. A recommendation on where to read up on these scams, log on to Better Business Bureau's website, search puppy scams, and you'll find out what the scam red flags are. It's always helpful. There's information on what to do if you have been a victim of a puppy scam. And feel free to give us a recommendation that we can share with East Texas. We love them. You can always get our attention with the hashtag NowNation. Well, some of the biggest cases in the country are solved with the help of technology that a Texas A&M professor pioneered. This is a man who's been dedicated to one specific topic, one subject, one specialty for like 50 years. That's why he's the best. Tonight we introduce you to the Pollen Profiler. This is a producer Libby favorite.
If you watch NCIS or Criminal Minds right here on CBS 19 or any other crime show for that matter, you've seen how detectives put the pieces together, right? They use everything from surveillance video to DNA. But now a unique process at Texas A&M is being used to solve crimes. Here's Grace White with the Pollen Profiler. Chilling murder cases, missing kids, chasing terrorists, unwrapping a crime scene takes determination. Inside a forensics lab at Texas A&M, an unlikely detective with a sense of humor. I like to play. I'm, I'm uh, you know, Sherlock Holmes. And for almost half a century, Dr. Von Bryant's been profiling pollen. So how do you use pollen to solve cold cases? Essentially what we try to do is pinpoint where things come from or where people have been. When most of us think about pollen, we think of trees, plants, and allergies. But it doesn't stop there. It travels indoors, too, on our clothes, making it almost like a fingerprint investigators can pick up from a crime scene. Under a microscope, the pollen grains point back to a specific part of the world where they're from. And in one case, it led investigators back to Boston and helped solve the disappearance of a little girl. In 2015, investigators found her dumped in a garbage bag in the Boston Harbor. Dr. Bryant mentors Andrew Lawrence, the only other forensic paleontologist in the U.S. who he trained. Lawrence pinpointed pollen on the girl's clothes to an area near the Arnold Arboretum at Harvard University. Sure enough, the suspect, the mother's ex-boyfriend, lived within walking distance. Recently, a jury handed down a conviction. I love it because I love to say I told you so. And this is a man who's been dedicated to one specific topic, one subject, one specialty for like 50 years. That's why he's the best. This student may be a little biased. The only person I can find who's willing to do this is my granddaughter, and I'm very proud of her. Now she's a student at A&M training to fill his shoes, and they're pretty big. After 9-11, the government called him to help track down terrorists. As they were trying to find bin Laden and members of Al-Qaeda. And so, yes, I did know that that was the primary goal. Bryant looked at everything from shoelaces, backpacks, even pollen samples collected from cell phones and bombs. But the sad reality now... Most of the police departments here don't even know about it. Pollen is not admissible in court like it is in other countries. This looks like a pretty good one right here. And with the rise in DNA, Brian often finds himself defending the golden dust most people still overlook on a crime scene. I still think it's going to be important for a number of years. I think it's a good career to get into. There's so few people in it, you don't have much competition. Brian is still teaching classes at Texas A&M in the Department of Anthropology. He often tells his students Mother Nature has a way of solving life's questions. If only we put in the time and effort to figure it all out. Pretty good advice, huh? All right, we take you back out to the Rose City rivalry after this two-minute timeout. We're talking football, people. Stay with us. Hey, we want to say hello to Ross, Carol, and hi, Rhonda. It's no longer. She, she was like, it is black. Never mind. Ha, ha, ha. We're back. Thanks for watching, guys. <coughs> oh.
It's a great night for football, right? Of course it is. Tristan Hardy is live at the final regular season game of the year, single tier. JT and Lee, nothing riding on the game except bragging rights tonight, right? Yeah, that's right, bragging rights. It's all or nothing. So whoever wins this one brings home the cheese. Bragging rights, of course. So if you can look behind me, guys, I mean, just check out the crowd. It was, it's filling up. The band is here. I mean, you should have heard them earlier. I mean, they were just going live right now. I mean, you can feel the good energy and the atmosphere. But I want to bring your attention back over here. I have my good friend Kenny Smith, one of the voices of JT football. I mean, you've been covering these games for, especially JT Lee games for 10 years. I mean, what's that like for you? Well, it's, it's like it is in almost every big town that has a couple of competing high schools. I, I think the thing about this rivalry that, that does set it apart is it really does kind of polarize this city. Uh, these high schools have been separated for a long time, different parts of the town. This is one of those times when everybody does kind of get back together. The intensity of rivalry really, it kind of, it kind of enhances what's going on in the stands because nobody really ever knows, regardless of record, which team is going to play better than the other. Robert E. Lee right now might have a worse record than John Tyler, but they always seem to beat the crud out of each other on Friday night. We'll see how this goes. So, well, I'm going to bring it back to you, Brian, reporting for 19 now, Tristan Hardy. Thank you much, Tristan. Beat the crud out of each other. I like that one. Okay, grab your fins and meet us back here after the break. Like, seriously, grab your fins. It's a workout like you live under the sea. I'm Danielle Nottingham in Southern California, where mythical creatures are inspiring real results. Well, the latest trend in water aerobics works your core and gives you a dose of fantasy at the same time. That's yeah, pretty cool. Daniel Nottingham shows us a unique under the sea workout. At the Hotel Del Coronado in San Diego, a mythical creature is coming to life. My favorite part is I actually get to be a mermaid. Holly Edgen isn't shy about slipping on colorful fins and diving into this under the sea workout called mermaid fitness. It was more fun than I could have even anticipated. Splashing around in fishtails may be fun, but isolating your legs and fins for 45 minutes is also intense cardio and strength training. So it's going to be a reverse bicep curl, but isolated. Part of that entails getting your heart rate up, get their core activated and working um, to get their biceps, their triceps, the upper body. And it's not just mermaids, even mermen like Taylor Ames are giving it a try. What kind of workout did you get? 
This was, I would say, be really similar to a swim workout, but then there's a, actually a fair amount of abs involved in it. Like my abs are like really hurting right now, sitting up straight. And we're gonna do 30 here. Holly says the low impact workout is helping her burn fat and build muscle. Your triceps are burning, um, just trying to stay afloat. Your shoulders, um, your core really is engaging because of the weight of the water on the fins. And she gets to live out a childhood fantasy. Danielle Nottingham, CBS News, San Diego, California. That is super cool, I'm just going to say it. Makes producer Libby miss SoCal for sure. The Mermaid class costs $25 and you have to know how to swim. I'd actually do it, i got to admit, I'd probably do it. <laughs> All right, coming up tonight at 10, or new at 10 as it says there, raising the awareness of homelessness in East Texas. A network of churches in the Longview area are holding a unique fundraiser. Participants are spending the night in what they're calling Cardboard Box City. See how it works coming up tonight at 10. All right, that's going to do it for us. For me, producer Libby, the entire 19 Now Nation. Thanks for watching, everybody. Remember, be the good. We'll see you tomorrow or Monday. Yeah, all right, same time, same 19 Now place on Monday. <laughs>